Good afternoon and welcome to the Theo Trader Afternoon Video. I am Blake Young and today is June 15th, 2023 and today we're going to ask the question, is the European Union rate hike good for stocks? Taking a quick look immediately at the ES today, you can see a very bullish day. The bullish day started early in the morning during the rate decision or the rate announcement for the Eurozone. It did not start after the market opened and didn't really continue later in the afternoon. It slowed down. All of that is derived from that rate hike or that rate shift in the Eurozone. What did it do to the Euro? If you look at the Euro US dollar during the same time period, looking at the move, you can see there is your announcement, same rally and an aggressive climb all the way up from 6 a.m. Mountain, 8 a.m. Eastern, all the way up from 108 to 109.44. That one and a half percent move from the low to the high is going to generally see weakening of the U.S. dollar about one and a half percent and a strengthening of U.S. equities because the dollar lost its purchasing power. If the dollar loses one percent purchasing power, generally speaking, equities will go up to two and two and a half percent for the day. As we're watching this and looking at the move, we can look at that percentage of one percent here should be equivalent to two percent here. However, you can see for the day, it was only 1%. So we're moving in lockstep with the dollar's weakness to U.S. equities climb. Equities do not have the justification to continue to climb with the fact that the U.S. is planning on future rate hikes. This is being driven purely based off the weakness of the U.S. dollar today. Now, if we were to look at the central bank rates, I had to go find the Eurozone central bank rates of in the 10 year treasuries. If we're to look at the 10 year rate, we can see that we've traveled back and forth three, three and a half percent. And we're currently at 3.16% in the 10 year Eurozone. What we're looking for is we're looking for the differential between the interest rates offered in the Eurozone versus the interest rates offered in the US. So keep in mind 3.16%. Comparing the Eurozone 10 year to the US 10 year, we're going 3.16 versus 3.728. So about a half a percent difference. And although I do think this long term 10 year treasury yield or the yield in the US versus the yield in the Eurozone is probably the bigger indicator for long-term economic health and long-term borrowing costs. It is being driven by the central bank rate. So let's go take a look at the differences and the changes and the shifts that have been going on and the reason why the US dollar is losing today and equities are climbing. Taking a look at Forex Factory on the calendar, you can see all the central bank rate decisions over the last two weeks. Realistically, it's about 11 days now, but the Australian or Reserve Bank of Australia raised rates from 3.85 to 4.1. Now that was a surprise. That's why it's in bright green. Canada also raised rates by 25 basis points as a surprise, putting it in green and raising rates to try to combat inflation. The Eurozone were expected to raise rates and they did raise rates a quarter point to 4%. And the US is the only one that didn't raise rates. So it doesn't really matter that Jerome Powell said, we're going to probably raise rates two more times. That's fine. We can speculate, we can plan, we can price in future rate hikes potentially, but what we have in front of us is actual rate hikes. Australia, Canada, and the Eurozone all raising rates to combat inflation and the US not. And what we have seen over the last few months, actually the last few years, last few decades, is in most economies, the interest rate offered by the banks is what drives demand more than almost anything else. If everything else is fairly equal as far as growth, inflation, or even market contraction, economic slowdown, it will come down to the interest rate differential. So I took the time to create a little spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet is going to show you the differential between the U.S. or the Federal Reserve and the European Union or the European Central Bank, ECB. Now, what I've done here is I've gone back to the first of each month and done the opening price and put that in as the Euro-U.S. dollar pair. I've also included the European Central Bank short-term rate, the 30-day, kind of like the Fed fund rate. 
and the U.S. rate or Fed funds rate for each of those time frames. And you can see that back in February 2022, the European Central Bank had a 0%, it actually was negative interest rate. The U.S. had a 0.125% rate. And so the difference between the European Union and the U.S. was 0.125. And so I tracked the difference between these interest rates going all the way through the last two years. As we're looking at this and looking at the data, you can see that as the differential between the U.S. and the Eurozone got larger and larger, went from 0.125 to 2%, the dollar gained and the Euro weakened. So we're pricing in the differential going forward of what the demand will be for the US dollar. Now we had this little blip, this spike down, this recovery in October. But the main thing is, is we're looking at all these moves. You can see that was a turning point of the difference of the rate hikes and the rate changes had a quick move there. And then as we're watching, we can see that we peaked out and then started to drop again. And as we peaked out and dropped, that was the turning point of the US dollar. And the US dollar started to lose against the Euro and the Euro started to climb again and again. So the differential became less and less between interest rates and the, the price between the Euro and the US dollar rose, unwinding all of the sell-off. So what I'm saying is, that while the rate differential became more and more from as low as you could get, 0 0.125. So we're the only differential. You can't have any larger differential from no differential to starting to climb and change the rate offered by the US versus what was offered by the Eurozone. That was the starting point of the dollar's gain or the Euro's loss. Now that we've created this peak and the differential has got as far as it can go and the US did not raise rates, and the euro did raise rates, we are now seeing a downward trend or a reduction of difference. And if there's no difference, then we need to unwind this price action all the way back up here. If we see the difference between the US and the European Central Bank come in back to 0% difference or half a point difference, and we should expect to see the euro climb back to $1.50 or higher, or sorry, $1.50, 12 or higher in the near term. And the blue line is the price on the right hand side. The interest rate differential is on the left hand side. Now, in case you're not sure if this is legitimate or worth tracking, be aware up here, I've calculated the correlation. The correlation between the difference between interest rates and the euro us dollar pair is 75 percent inverse correlation which means that 75 percent of the time there's a shift or change in interest rates and the interest rate differential is getting larger or smaller 75 percent of the time it correlates directly to the price action between the euro and the us dollar 75 percent and you can see very dramatically that pullback and the reversal. So if the interest rate differential goes from this current 1.25%, slides down to 0.5 or 0.25 or even to the lowest point, no difference, then we should expect to see the Euro US dollar continue to recover from the current rate of 109.45 back up to 112, 122 possibly over the next little while. The question is whether we think that's the case. If the Fed is going to raise rates another two times and the European Union does not, then the differential goes back up and the price goes back down, favoring the US dollar. If the Fed does not raise rates and the European Union continues to raise rates, then that means the differential goes down and the Euro US dollar price goes up. This is the number one factor in demand for central bank currencies. This is the number one factor for reserve currency movements. In fact, if we were to look at the pound versus the US dollar or the pound versus the yen at its peak interest rate in the sixes and sevens, that is when the pound versus the yen created the ultimate carry trade and the pound yen saw 50, 70, 80% moves over a few years let alone the carry trade that went all along with that. Let's take a look at the longer term chart between the Euro and the US dollar. 
if we were to look back when the interest rates were 0% and 0%, it was the zero interest rate policy for the U.S., the zero interest rate policy for the Eurozone, this is what was going on. We were just swinging higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, lower, but overall, there was no trend. When the differential started picking up, where the U.S. was raising rates earlier than the Eurozone, we started seeing the breakdown, the lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. We really accelerated that in February and saw all that rate differential strengthen the dollar and weaken the euro. After we stop that, there's your October low, and we can see that we're creating higher highs, higher lows. So if we get back to the zero interest rate policy, better said the zero differential, we really could see the euro climb all the way back up to 120. If we see the U.S. raise rates, then we could pause here. We could put a, a top in here at 110 or maybe at 112. The reason why we want to look at that is because the historic correlation between the U.S. dollar and the SPX or the ES is very high. Right now I'm on a three-year weekly chart and we can look at this on the daily chart. We can look at this on the longer time frame. This ties very much to what we taught in today's currency class. But you can see that the majority of the time, except when we were trading flat, the majority of the time we saw a very high correlation. Correlation is as high as 93, 94, 95%. This little peak right here was the highest and we're at 95% correlated to the euro US dollar versus equities, which means the US dollar has an inverse correlation to equity prices to the tune of 95% of the time. Now, we decoupled here and we just raised the rates again in the U Eurozone. So this could mean that we're gonna see the correlation pop back in here, get to zero, 0 0.5, and as high as 80s and 90s again. And that's where we need to be watching for those central bank rates in the next and upcoming months. If the Eurozone continues to raise rates and the US continues to hold, we should see the Euro strengthen and equities go back to previous highs because the US dollar's purchasing power will continue to weaken. Now, this is just a mathematical approach to correlations between the U.S. dollar and equities as an inverse correlation or a positive correlation with the euro U.S. dollar versus the equities. However, there is something else to be aware of, and that is if the U.S. dollar is weakening and equities are going higher, if the dollar is weakening equal to or faster than equities are going higher, if the dollar's purchasing power is going down, if inflation remains high because we're not raising rates, and equities are rising but not as fast as inflation, that is an indication of stagflation and possibly a recession. So we want to watch that very carefully. We want to watch that just because equities are climbing does not mean economic health. It could mean almost exclusively dollar weakness. And we'll watch that over the next days, weeks to come. And We'll see. The timing of this is going to be very interesting. And what I'm looking for is there's still upside with the euro US dollar just to get back up to this 110. And if we're seeing that move from 109.47 to 110, I believe that we will have a bullish day on Friday in US equities. We'll likely see it push up to the more recent highs. And this is a two year resistance area for the euro versus the US dollar, which will equate to a two year support level. Here's the dollar index right back in here about 101.14 for the US dollar. Now if we do finish out that move down to the lows possibly by tomorrow, remember I'm on a weekly chart here so it could take into the beginning of next week, but if we do see prices drift lower in the dollar index over the next, let's just say by midweek next week, that move of 0 0.7 down, negative 0 0.7 should see a 1.4% or 2.1% move higher in equities before we pause. And that gives us an opportunity to find potentially the bottom or support level for the dollar and the top of this equity bull run. So watch for that over the next couple of days. Look to correlate that to the long-term view and the weekly view of the ES or the SPX or the SPY. And I think that should line up pretty close to this 45.51 if I were to use the trend line just to measure that out from current price up to that next resistance level. There's our 1.4 
right to that close and up to these highs, 2.1%. So that's my expectation over the next few days that if the dollar continues to drift back to support, U.S. equity should drift back to this resistance, and we're looking for 1.4 to 2% higher move in U.S. equities. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll look forward to talking to you next week.